This is episode 246 of How About That Cigar, recorded live at the Corona Cigar Studio. On this episode, we talk to John Peter Lorendi about Peter James Co. and much more. Please take a minute to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform so you never miss an episode. Now on with the show. Corona Cigar Company is your one-stop shop for all your cigar needs. Whether that's a brand new humidor, a box of those new cigars you've been waiting for, a top-of-the-line cutter or lighter, a place to enjoy the finest cigars and spirits with friends, or the only cigars grown right here in the Sunshine State. We've got you covered. Come visit one of our retail locations for the ultimate cigar experience. Visit us online at coronacigar.com. How about that cigar? Well, how about that cigar? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Corona Cigar Studios for episode 246 of How About That Cigar Live. Thank you so much for joining us live on Facebook, YouTube, X, and Instagram. And a reminder for our fantastic viewers on Instagram, if you want to join in the comments, if you want to join in the conversation, head over to YouTube and Facebook because Instagram doesn't allow comments to come through our stream provider. So yeah. we want to get you involved in the conversation. So join us on YouTube or Facebook, also live right now. Finally, Finally. how about that cigar is back? We're back. Uh, we hope everyone ha- uh, here in the States had a fantastic Memorial Day holiday last Monday night. Um, it was rainy basically here. You know, it really wasn't very, um, you know, it was just kind of dull and rainy, but you know, still a good time. We had family over, uh, actually not on Monday. We had family over on Sunday. Uh, but it was, you know, it was nice. And, uh, uh, but yeah, if you guys are, uh, on with us live right now, let us know as always in the comments, what you're smoking, what you're drinking. Uh, we have a great special guest coming up in a few minutes and for the audio podcast listeners, guys, thanks so much for listening to how about that cigar on your favorite audio podcast platform. We really do appreciate it. Uh, here in the Corona Cigar Studios, uh, it is definitely time that we say hello to our incredible producer, Justy Smoke. Brother, what is cracking? What is going down, guys? Uh, what up, dude? Not the humidity. The humidity, the humidity is not going down. No, he's not going down. Temperature's it, going up. Yeah. And black soldier flies everywhere. Yeah. Basically, there's little, like, black fly oh, dots. Yeah. It's all gone. We cleaned it up. Yeah. We're good. Yeah, that's, insect frost is good fertilizer. It, it is good fertilizer, but but it's you know it's it's the drawback living you know just so close to a a, a horse and cattle yeah. farm. You know we get a shit ton of flies, but, but we're, we're not here to talk about flies. We're not here to talk about we? flies. No, we're absolutely. Here to, we're here not. to talk. I got to figure something. Oh wait, out. Uh, wait, what are you doing, Rob? So since since we were uh, last on live with you guys, uh, we were really hopeful for the Timberwolves, man, and Dallas just smoked them uh, in in the NBA uh, playoffs. You know, the uh, Dallas ended up winning the Western Conference, and so now you know Dallas and Boston. I just don't see how Dallas is going to stand up to Boston. Boston's been incredible all season long. They had the best record in the NBA. Um, they, you know, the only, here's the only thing see, I, I mentioned this when I was talking about the series between Dallas and Minnesota, I mentioned that, that Kyrie was getting old. Well, he didn't show it in the series against Minnesota. He torched the Timberwolves anybody they put up against him. He did great. And Luca was of course, fantastic also. Uh, it was disappointing to see Minnesota lose, but um, if they can keep a good roster together for next season, you know, it, it's, again, that whole old adage, it's, there's always next year. But I, I really do believe if they can keep a solid roster again for next season, they're, they're such a young team, they have such good talent, and if they can just get a little more discipline, a little more drive and and resiliency, then I think next year they could definitely – they they could definitely get over that hump of you know the conference finals and make it to the finals. I hope this, this is going to sound crazy. We need to get rid of cat. Well, we could get a lot of money out of that. Let's too. get rid of cat and we'll get some younger, more better role players and let uh, 
let Edwards take let the Edwards lead role. Take the lead and and have this team be his. It's possible that that could be the the way to go. I don't I don't really know. They they did seem to struggle with chemistry with team chemistry in that Dallas series. So maybe that had something to do with it. It's it's really hard to say. Um, well, let's let's talk about something that's really going to upset you. What's that? What's going to upset me? JJ just got one point one. One hundred and forty million dollars. One hundred and forty million dollars. Eighty-eight on signing and a hundred guaranteed. One hundred and ten guaranteed. What? That really sucks yeah. for your Packers. Not really. Hmm. Oh yeah. Not really. It's gonna. I mean, he's. So Justin Jefferson is probably best wide receiver. Probably the, the best wide receiver in the in in the NFL. Um, I'm glad the Vikings signed him to a big contract. He deserved a big contract. I'm glad he got it. Um, but. With the Vikings, you know, they drafted J.J. McCarthy as their new quarterback. He's, it's still too soon to tell whether or not he's going to end up getting the starting spot. He's going to be third stringer. You think he's so? He's going to sit this year. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Um, we'll see because Justin Jefferson, as good as he is, he needs somebody who, can, the ball. who can get him the ball oh, for sure. the right way. Um, can we uh, bring up something that happened in Minneapolis? Yeah, of course. There was a shooting last week, and we lost Officer Officer Mitchell. Yeah. Um, Jamal Mitchell, and uh, it was tragic. He went to uh, the victim to help him, and it was actually a shooter, hmm. and he shot him. And uh, it was just tragic, the whole thing around. I think one other person lost his life. Yeah, it was, it was senseless. Other, it was just other, a senseless killing. Three other people were wounded. Um, engine 10 was shot up. Our guys yeah. had to hide behind a, the engine to not get shot. So it was a tough one. Your firefighter buddies? Yeah, my captain, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is he okay? Yeah. Uh, Ricky straight off his boot. He lucky he had steel toe boots on. Oh, so he got shot in the foot, huh? Yeah. Oh, wow. So Yeah, thoughts and thoughts and prayers to um, to all the people involved, the families uh, who have either injured loved ones or lost a loved one. And just the, the, this kind of stuff's got to stop. And yeah, it's got to stop, you know, just hoping that we can get a little more sense back in the world, you know, yeah. a little more compassion. Something's got to give maybe both these future presidents will just decide not to run and we can get some decent people. in Because <laughs> they both suck. That'd be cool. I'd be all yeah, right with I'd that. Be cool with that. Right. Um, Twins news is short. Uh, they're very mediocre. They're they're still hovering around the middle of the road in, uh, you know, uh, the American League Central. They're just, they're okay. You know, they, they'll have a string of wins and then they'll have a string of losses. And uh, I guess a bright spot is that uh, Royce Lewis is coming back uh, from injury. He, he literally played two games at the beginning of the season and then got injured. And he's coming back uh, from his injury uh, time. So hopefully he'll be back uh, at the form that we hope he will uh, because he, he is a factor. But now, you know, the, the Yankees swept us in Minnesota uh, a few weeks ago. Yep. Now we have to go to New York and, New and face been the on Yankees. Fire lately. And they've been and, on fire. And, it's, place, and, right? and winning any team winning against the Yankees in Yankee Stadium is a really tough thing to do. So I don't have high hopes for this, you know, series in New York, but we'll see how it goes. And then the, the Rangers got knocked out by... Rangers got knocked out Florida. by the Florida Panthers. That's what? just crazy. Florida yeah. shouldn't have a team. So the Florida Panthers. Too much sunshine down there. I, but I got to say, I'm glad that the Dallas Stars lost. Yes. I, I'm not. I, see, I'm not one of those people like I'm a huge Green Bay Packer fan, but I don't like wish for the Bears to lose or wish for the Vikings to lose. I just I'm a, I'm a Packer fan. Yeah. But you there's only the one Dallas. team in all the professional sports that I want to lose. And, that and that's the Dallas, Stars, the Dallas Stars. Dallas Stars. Because they stole the Minnesota North Stars from oh, us. 30 plus yeah, years ago. Yeah. And at least they could have done it was left us the name. Ran off to Dallas. True. So I mean we got the wild, but it's the wild. We got the wild. And North I'm Stars. grateful to have the wild. Yeah. But but yeah. when when the Minnesota North Stars moved to Dallas, that was like a knife in the heart. So Man. that's the only team in all of professional sports that I want them to lose. Good to know. So I am very glad the that the Edmonton Oilers and it's cool because you know, Canada is so known for hockey. That it's it's always good to have a Canadian team in the Stanley Cup final. Yeah, I think I, anytime there's a Canadian team in the Stanley Cup final, I think it's 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 good for good for hockey. My honest belief is anything south of the Mason Dixie shouldn't be in the 
ditch at the World Cup. <laughs> Any, anywhere where the Cup. where the the lakes and ponds yeah, don't freeze yeah, over. They shouldn't be. It so, should be all of us north. But there are a lot of hockey fans in Florida. Yeah. Well, because they didn't they win one a few years ago too. Uh, it was semi recent, I believe. Longer than anything I don't, in I, Minnesota. Honestly, I don't, oh yeah, yeah. The the well, no Minnesota team has ever won a Stanley Cup. The Dallas Stars Two years won a Stanley left, Cup, and it was like four or five years. It was ninety eight, and they moved there in ninety three. Okay, Bastard. so it's it's been a long time, but still, we just we I, I want Edmonton to win. I want the Canadian team to win the Stanley Cup. It's a sort Canadian, you know. Well, they were one of the original eight teams, too, weren't they? I believe so. Yeah, I want yeah. them to win. Yeah. Fuck Florida. What's going on, Pickle? Hey, big Pickle. Good to see you, brother. Rally loves Packers. Well, that's... Raleigh. Raleigh. Oh, Raleigh. He's got the green shirt on, you know. Oh, that's Dude. green. That's Jets colors, oh, you moron. Oh, <laughs> that is that is that is not Green Bay green. That is oh, okay. New, York New York Jets, Jets green. green. Oh, okay. That's New York Jets. Green. Well, we were talking about Canadians a little bit ago, and you know, it just like popped in my head that we might have a Canadian guest. Italian I know tonight. Might. Yeah. I know, right? Uh, it is. What def- It is definitely time to get our special guest on the show. Uh, but actually, we have to do Spirit of Mystery. Spirit of Mystery. Brought to us by our friends at Post Anya Cigars. Do you find yourself unsatisfied with the top 10 list from How About That Cigar? Are you wondering how cigars from Post Anya didn't make the HBTC list but found their way onto other lists? Well, fortunately, you can be reminded every week with this Post Anya Cigars advertisement. Post Anya Cigars, the number one unranked cigar in the industry. All right, so this evening, Spirit of Mystery uh, in this lovely glass right here. A uh, little, uh, I had a little, you know, sniff test of the uh, beverage earlier. It is definitely a bourbon. It, uh, it smells really good. It's an American whiskey, and it's 12-year age, batch number one. It's got really classic, like, vanilla, oak, a little bit of floral, um, almost like, almost honey, maybe a little bit. Not like artificial honey, but like really the real deal. Like the honey from the bees. Let's get a little uh, sample here. Sample. Like the birds and the bees. Whoa. Is Matt, that a Matt, whoa you don't like it or a whoa it's good? No, that's a... That's a Matt likey likey whoa. I know what that one is. So there's a lot more complexity on the palate than there is on the nose. It's... I mean, there's... This one, this one's intense. It's, it seems more than your average proof. I'm going to guess it's somewhere in the hundred ish, hundred to 110 proof range. That's just a guess. Um, yeah, there's like, there's this sweetness, like brown sugar. Um, I get a lot of that barrel charred Oak, but I also get like, like I said, brown sugar, um, a little bit of funkiness, but not like Scotch funkiness, like like peaty, not peaty funk. It's it's almost like uh, like it was finished in a different kind of barrel. Maybe mm-hmm. I can't quite tell, but it's yeah. It just seems like there's more going on than just the. But you can definitely taste that age on there. Like it's got it spent a lot of time in in the barrel. You can really taste that. So. Um, that's a nice spirit. It's a lighter in color than good. Normally I would expect a darker color for an older aged spirit, but that's got, that's got a really kind of milder amber color to it than, than a, a darker not, than I would expect from, you said it's 12 year. Yeah. I, I would expect a little more color, but the flavor is definitely coming through. So I dig it. And we will reveal that. Uh, later in the show let's get our special guest onto the show finally guys brought to us by our friends from drew estate and following the resounding success of blackened cigars m81 maduro drew estate announced the new blackened s84 shade 2 black wrapped in a luxurious connecticut ecuador cover leaf the experience of this expression is distinctly different from the original m81 maduro while still retaining its foundational qualities due to the connecticut broadleaf maduro binder and filler leaves from pennsylvania 
and Nicaragua. Presented in elegantly designed 20-count boxes, blackened S84 Shade to Black by Drew Estate is available in Robusto, Toro, Corona Doble, and Corona. For more information, please visit DrewEstate.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you would please put your hands together. Help us welcome to episode 246 from Peter James Co. John, Peter, Lorendi, welcome to the show, brother. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, two things, Matt, man, you sound like a sportscaster. Oh, nice. I yeah, need I need some of that voiceover. I hey, with some of any, our reels. Anything, anything you need done, man, you say the word. I'll, I'll, I'd, I'd love to help out. Did you, did you have you guys ever seen that show that uh, Brockmire? Yeah. Okay. Talk about sports casting. How how cool is that show? That show is that it's hilarious. I mean, it's sad, but it's hilarious at the same time. It's, yeah. <laughs> it is, yeah. But I would, yeah. That's you just remind me of that. He does that, that great, great. He does that great. Like it, it sounds like, like the old the the sports casters of old, like the guys yeah. from, you know, you think even back to the earliest days of like baseball on radio, like Red Barber and guys like that. You know, I love yeah. That. Red Barber was awesome. Yeah, he was. So, how you been, bro? Busy, but good. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, we've. It's it's like where in the world is 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 John Peter Lorendi? It's like it's like Carmen San Diego. Uh, you've been you've been like hitting it just crazy lately. But but uh, and and we definitely want to hear like tales of your travels and stuff like that. But uh first off uh let us know if you're able to join us uh with a cigar and a beverage this evening are you smoking and drinking anything with us this evening i am i am smoking nice that is the emergence uh formally launched unlaunched launched unshipped <laughs> no. uh, uh, gotta love i think it'll be shipping july i am not joining you in the spirit world this evening um i don't normally drink after 9 p.m oh Full yeah disclosure yeah, Good no worries, you. no worries. Um, so, I don't normally drink, neither does Justin. So yeah, yeah, I'm, no, I'm the only one who whoever, and I, I really just you know, I, I drink, drink when I force it for him to drink. Yeah, I, I, I drink <laughs> for spirit of mystery on the show, and honestly, for the last couple of months, I've barely had any alcohol at all except uh, for the show. I tried to get you drunk last Sunday. You tried, you <laughs> failed, you failed. Yeah, I just I wasn't I wasn't into it, <laughs> um, but. Uh, John, one of the things that we love hearing from people is, you know, that that sort of origin story, that spark that got you interested in premium cigars. Uh, so talk us through, you know, what what uh, brought you into the, the hobby and the culture of premium cigars. Uh, and even if you could remember what it might have been, what that first cigar was. Where do I start here? My first cigar, let's start there. First cigar I ever had, I took, I don't know, maybe three three puffs and I threw it away. And it was a stolen cigar. I had jacked it from my dad's humidor and it was a Cohiba. It was a Cuban. Okay. Uh, story goes, I was going golfing with some hockey buddies and they said, hey, bring a cigar. We're going to have some cigars on the golf course. I had never smoked a cigar. I never smoked anything at that point. And so I did. I didn't. I went into my dad's humidor and I looked, I looked for the nicest, shiniest one I could find. And it just so happened to be a Cohiba. And I took it. We started smoking a cigar and I was like, mm, mm, <laughs> this is not for me. So that was my, actual, my first experience with a cigar. And I was probably 17 years old, slightly underage. Um, but the, the true romance started when it was a very, very, I guess you could call it difficult time in life. I was kind of going through the whole monkey mind. Um, it was good in my head a lot. Hard for me to settle down. I didn't really know how to stay still. I was always moving. Um, and a buddy of mine came over and we were having some drinks. And he had a cigar and he asked if, if I wanted to join him. And I was just like, yeah, sure, why not? I think I tried this once uh, a few years back and it uh, didn't work. But I'll give it a go. And... Man, I just sat there with him for an hour, enjoyed a cigar, and it, it tasted great. 
the company was great. It was just that whole perfect combination of, you know, set setting, conversation, spirit. And I was like, hey, you know, I I sat here for a whole, I don't know if it was an hour, a little more than an hour. And it felt really good. And I felt a little bit more at peace after that. So, you know, what? that's kind of what drew me towards cigars. Uh, and then, you know, my character is once I enjoy something or I get on the hook with something, I'm all in. I go yeah. all in. I, it was maybe a couple of weeks after I had a humidor. It was full of cigars. Yep. And everywhere I went, I would bring a cigar. And it was just, that was the journey. That's where I started. And, and I, I loved it. I was just an enthusiast. That sounds, yeah, Raul just said, I don't know anybody like no, that. No, no, we don't know anybody all, like that at all. We're None all, of us started off like that. We're, we're all, all like that. right? <laughs> <laughs> None of us have a problem with Cigars Anonymous. Yeah. <laughs> Are you smoking, Justin? What am I smoking? I got the uh, Emergence from Peter James Co. right here. Let's see if I can make that bigger. Boom. There and we go. And then along with the uh, trusty show exclusive 1919 root beer every week. You know how we do it. What about you, Raul? I am generally smoking the same thing. Same thing. Same. Love that logo. Oh, Just get off my face. <laughs> <laughs> there, there we go. go. Love that logo. And I'm drinking the water as usual. And I uh, let's get Matt fired up. I'm on not going to be left yeah, out. We got to get Matt fired up here. So let's get him over on that toast cam. That's right. Let's uh, let's get it fired up. Uh, Zycar is the leading accessory brand with innovative butane lighters, precision cutting instruments, travel cases and humidors. Each product is designed and manufactured with utmost precision and attention to detail. The result is a range of products that exude quality and refinement, reflecting the brand's dedication to excellence. For more information, please visit Zycar.com. There we go. This baby is ready to go. Mm -hmm. So, what are we going to jump into next? Are we going to talk about the cigar we're smoking, or what do we got next? On the well, let, let's let the cigar kind of settle into our palates a little bit. Um, but... Uh, one of the things I'm curious about, because, uh, John, you, you know, the the way that uh, you also kind of expanded your um, sort of love for the world of premium cigars uh, is surrounding, you know, the, uh, leather goods, uh, you know, mm -hmm. store cigars and carry cigars. So what what got you into, um, you know, was designing leather goods something you were doing before? cigars or did that sort of come about out of utility strictly utility and a little nudge from the missus okay <laughs> a not so polite nudge so which i'm grateful for um i know i've always been somewhat of a i guess creator uh i've been in marketing design pretty much most of my career or most out of college and when I got into the cigar hobby, uh, you know, every time we went out to dinner or a cocktail party or someone else, wherever it was, I, it was, I'd always ask my wife, hey, can you bring your big purse? Because I need to take three cigar, two, three cigar prong holders, my lighters, my cutter, maybe a little can of butane or two lighters because I know I'm going to run out. And so after a while, the, 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 gig, the gig was up. She's like, hey, fuck off. I want to bring, I want to accessorize. I want to wear my little purses and. I was just like, carry your own shit. And I was like, oh, man, okay, I'll do that. And so I kind of went on a hunt. I was like, I need uh, a case for my cigars and my accessories that's a little more elegant than the Pelican style case, the plastic one that I, you know, I still have one. I take it fishing or whatever. It's a good, uh, it's a good utility case. But I need something I can take into a restaurant if I'm dressed a little more than I would be if I'm camping. And so I scoured the internet, you know, talked to the buddies, went to Hearst, asked people randomly, and I couldn't find a thing. So I was with uh, a couple of buddies having a cigar, and uh, I had mentioned it, and I said, uh, hey, does anybody want to make one? And oddly enough, the next day, this was the co-founder of Peter James back in 2014, called me and said, hey, if you're serious, I'd love to, to join this this hunt with you about like making our own. I think it's a great idea. I don't think there's anything out there and I'd love to have one myself. So we, uh, we went out to look for 
a manufacturer to make one just for our group. We didn't say, hey, let's just start a company and sell lots of cases. It was, let's just make one for our group. And this way, my wife will be happy. I'll be happy. Hmm. That's it. The guys will be happy. And so that was a tougher journey than anticipated. I mean, I'm sure you know commerce today. Nobody really gives a shit about the little guys most of the time. Um, so for us to find someone to make 10 cases, they're like, get out of here. Don't waste our time. So it took quite a while, quite a few hiccups, uh, a few failures, a few lost deposits before we actually found someone brave enough to, to manufacture for us. And we did that. And once we had our cases, which was the Gen 1, it was nothing crazy, but it was simple, simplistic, very nice leather, it was functional. Um, and then the guys started posting their cases on Instagram with their cigars like you see everywhere now. Um, and then, it's, you know, you start seeing the comments. Where did you get this? Where do I find this? I want this. So we kind of looked at each other and said, hey, people are asking for it. I mean, it wouldn't be a bad side gig. Uh, plus, we love we love the industry. We love cigars. It's a passion. Why not create income from a passion? I mean, that's the that's the dream, is it not, for everybody? Yeah. At least I think so. So that's that's kind of how the, it all spawned, uh, and then we just kept growing from there. And that's that's kind of how I have started to position all my businesses now. It's how can I take the things I love in life and earn income from it? And it's selfishly, it's about the fact that I just want to live my life having fun and providing for my family. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. No. So that's kind of how I live my life now. It's if, if I'm truly passionate about something, I know I'll give it my everything, just like you guys attest to. You know, when, you, when you're passionate about something, you're all in, and, and I'm, I'm no different. Uh, so I'd rather be all in with something I love and have the ability to use that to provide for my family. Yeah. You know, I can only wish I could see one in person. If there was any way we could see one right now. What? You know, Justin has hooked us oh, up, I, as a matter I, of fact. I might have you, a package oh, here that I have that. not opened yet. This is a night of Quinky Dinks. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, this man. this is going to be a live I haven't opened this yet. So I'm super excited because I reached out to John. And I'm like, look. You know, you're going to be on the shelf. I need a new case. I want to get the upgraded John Peter, you know, latest swag going on. So I was like, what can I do for you to like, get this on the show? So I purchased this with my own money through thanks to uh, John. But we're going to do an unboxing of it. Yeah, right on. Here on the show. This is the first time we've done an unboxing before. Why don't you put so. the camera on yourself, buddy? I'm Are you? getting there. Yeah, I'm you... getting there. I just got to get the thing open first. <laughs> All right. I didn't want to cut myself here, so. Let's do this. And then I got a lot going on here, don't I? That's all right. All right. You're doing great. Go. There we go. No, don't let him off the hook, Daddy. <laughs> oh, we haven't God. seen each other for two weeks. You know how many shots I got built up on both <laughs> you, Mofos? <laughs> so, it's in it. Oh, this just looks just like the cigar. If you guys haven't seen the cigar, by the way, that we're smoking, it comes in a similar box. Yeah. Beautiful Very box. beautiful emergence um i know there's a story and we want to hear all about the cigar in a second but let's get to the accessories first yeah absolutely i know that has a story that's deep in your heart i'm guessing from the term emergence kind of i'm not going to spoil it for everybody you can tell them but <laughs> <laughs> so this box here is peter james this is like uh you know nice box yeah nice i mean it's got on. it's got like the logo watermarked i mean yeah, this this is not just watermarked i mean i can't yeah my camera light is so much here but there's a, a story um it says from our very care we want to convey our gratitude for the trust you have placed in our brand you are the beacon that guides our purpose pushing us to create uh create ever the more exquisite piece of art these creations are not just products, but a promise of moments to be cherished, bringing joy for many years to come. John P. Lorendi, founder of Peter James Co. So inside the box. Just that quote makes me want to buy one. I know, right? So look at, the, look at the inlay of that, too. It's like, you know, it's nice inside there. Yeah, that copper well, color or that, that rose That's gold rose color. Gold. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Look at the case. This is like a Fuente style case. You know, there's even a, a cloth here that I'm guessing it's to maybe clean it up or something. Um, but you, it has a little drawstring bag right here, right? And then inside, wow, is a 
black. I got the leather version case. And then inside, it also Man. has like the red. Oh, I love that red interior. Oh, that okay. red that red and black yep. pops. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, so that's that's super dope. It's got the uh, you know, buttons here to close it. Oh yeah, the like lighters, the lighters, cutters. Lighters. Throw your Bulbada pack in here if you want to, along with some other accessories. Got your perfect draw tool right here. You can stick in there with oh, you nice. have over here, and I will be putting that here in a second. And then your actual case for the cigar. You probably hold five or six in here usually is what oh. I can fit my other one currently. But nice. that is the uh, nice Italian work by Peter James, as mm. it says right here on the stitching too. Oh, wow. So, and then along with that, um, you know, I brought the lighter that John also gave us at uh, PCA at the media when we went out over at uh, Luciano's little pool party. So great lighter. This lighter is actually pretty sick. I like it's a single torch lighter. And if you can see it on the camera, yeah, it just like these flaps open up and it kind of like just emerges out of there, right? See what I did there. And it's I a like what you did there. Yeah. It, it, it's like a nice wide there. torch too, even though it's yeah. only a single it's a torch. Single flame, it, but it's I, a big torch. I love single flame torches, especially for touch-ups as multi-purpose. So yeah, you know the, the lighter that also Peter James Co has there. So, do you have one of those in gold leather? I I made we made one at some point when we launched our first cigar, Los Estoico, which we did a black and gold and a white and gold. Well, if you have one of those hanging around, I'd love one. <laughs> how, much do re- how much do they retail for? See, yeah. Justin- you know what? Hold on. You know what's funny? I think I have one white and gold left in our in our warehouse here. Take my money. Take my money. <laughs> yeah. So what happened when we were given these wonderful lighters is I'm a gold. I, I like I like shit that pops. Justin's more of a I have black, black. As you can tell. So we traded lighters, and then he got the black case. And I'm like. Maybe they can get a gold one. I, I, don't, I don't like gold at all. Oh, no, you don't like gold? Yeah. <laughs> so what do these retail for, John? Just so everybody knows. Yeah. Um, you know, I know it's a higher-end leather product, you know, that we that's here. And um, you have this one. Um, there's another. What's the other term? It's not leather. What's the other material you use? Alcantara. So there's the Alcantara. So yeah. this was our this is our original series, mm-hmm. which was uh, based off the original design launched in 2014. Okay. Uh, this retails for five thirty-five, and it's handmade. In yeah. call it North America, Canada, mm-hmm. uh, by an Italian artisan who actually migrated here and started a, a leather manufacturing workshop. Great story, wonderful man. And to this day, he still manufactures our original series. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so not a. It feels sturdy too. It doesn't feel like uh, some of the other ones that are yeah. flimsy, yeah, yeah. cheap. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's got it's got structure to it, yeah. Yeah. but the I mean the leather, the texture of the leather is super soft, mm-hmm. but the case itself, it doesn't it doesn't feel like flimsy. It's got structure to it, and so uh, what, what we we don't advertise much, and that's my fault. I suck at it, but we what we actually line it with a German leather board. So when oh, most oh. people use like in, if you're manufacturing overseas, I'm just going to say the word China. And normally they'll use what's most cost effective, which is a cardboard. The problem is, or any type of board, like paper board, over time, if you ever crease that board, it's creased. Right. And then you have that seam. This is a, a German manufactured material that mimics cardboard. It's just, it's a stiff, but you could actually roll it up, twist it, turn it, and it'll always go back to its original shape. It's more of like a fabric. So that's how we line the cases to give it a structure. So, so I know I when people to, sometimes look at the case like, oh, it's 500 and you know, the competitor is 300. And it's like, yeah, well, this shit's handmade in North America. And we actually put a lot of time and effort into, into the functionality of it. Well, that looks like a perfect Father's Day present. Yeah. I heard that's around the corner. Yeah. yeah. And I, heard, I think you should let me in on who I should contact to get you that white and gold case. I'll send you my <laughs> wife's number. <laughs> so this i i gotta i gotta throw this out there and yeah. and put this on the the, the big camera because yeah. so, i mean that, that just way more justice than my the, camera does the, thank you the, <laughs> the pebbling and the texture yeah. on the leather is incredible yeah. these back panels behind the red leather panels behind the storage compartments are actually padded and 
This is crazy. I love this detail. You open up the compartment where the cigars are meant to go. And in here, there's a sleeve for a Bovida pack. That's, yes. I mean, that is like such that's attention to detail. Yeah. Dope. That's, that's yeah. incredible that there's a, an extra sleeve inside the cigar compartment for a Bovida pack. I, I just love that attention to detail. Nice. I... Me too. Me too. It's beautiful. Man, yeah, the 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 construction, the craftsmanship on this is is fantastic. And it I mean this looks like th this is just as at home at your local backyard herf as it is at a fancy black tie cigar dinner. Mm -hmm. So I I love that. Yeah, that's beautiful. Nice solid zipper. And this cigar is extremely American zipper, Raul. And Bert, American <laughs> so, thank you again, John, for, for this case. I am going to ha get a lot of use out of this. I'm super excited about this. It even has like a little sleeve on the outside. Geez, you got everything on this thing. So it's like I, I can put so much more stuff in here. I'm looking forward to using this. So thank you, brother, again. You're welcome. Now, let's get to this cigar. That's yeah. the next day because I know Matt's lit up over there. Raul's lit up. I, I remember we had one, um, you know, very end of the day when we met with Luciano over, um, you know, at his booth. Um, our palace were shot. Our palace were shot, but like Luciano's look, PCA we're palace. not even doing an interview today. We had some stuff going on. We sat down with Luch. He made the day right, and we enjoyed your cigar there with him that day. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the emergence, the story of it. How it came to market, how this idea even came to be, um, other than you believing in something that you could do and made it happen. And also, how you hooked up with Luciano? Yeah. All right, I'll just we'll just start with the story. Yeah. And see where it takes us. Okay, so uh, I'm really bad with timelines. Call it maybe a year and a half, two years ago, whatever it was that uh, we were both at TPE, and uh, a mutual friend of ours, I guess, uh, had got over to him and said, "Hey, you know, you should go check out." my buddy's booth over at uh, Peter James. And uh, he was kind enough to actually come by. And he came by and he saw our booth. He saw everything we were doing. And this is the time that we had launched uh, Los Estoico, which was my first try at manufacturing a cigar, at blending and manufacturing a cigar. And he came, introduced himself, didn't say much. But, you know, you just feel somebody's energy. You just feel like, you know, their intention. They have good purpose and there for a reason and, and he's like do you mind if i see one of each of your cigars and i said absolutely and i gave him one of each and he did this thing where i just cut an inch off of the wrapper and was like kind of dissecting it and then was gra grabbed the kleenex and was rubbing it and then lit it and then waited to get the flavor of the cigar without the wrapper and then smoked a little bit into the wrapper and gave me his thoughts and gave me some tips, gave me some, we just critiquing it, but in a way that was not intrusive. It was, it was welcoming. And it was just, he just he was doing it because he really saw the effort I was putting in and wanted to help. And so I, I took that. Uh, I never seen that. Well, you know, it was really nice. You don't really get that too often. You know, it's, it's a friendly business, but it's also a competitive business. It's not, it's not, uh, you know, hide that <laughs> it's business. Right. So it was really, really cool of him to do that for me. And, uh, it wasn't at that point, but it was at the PCA, the following, following TPE. I said, Hey, would you be willing to make a cigar? And, uh, he said, yeah. And, and we had a conversation and it was a very minimal conversation. We didn't talk blend. We didn't talk anything. We just talked experience. I said, this is how I want my clients to feel when they grab a Peter James cigar. And this is how I want them to feel when they're done. And the next time he saw me, he had five samples, five blends. And I had a, three or four people with me, a few friends. And, and at the time before he was my business partner, my, he was entertaining the idea of Adrian. And we smoked each of the cigars together at the same time just went through a little blend tasting and we're just, I was blown away. Um, and actually this cigar, the predecessor, which was called deep and shallow 
was the was, was basically what this ended up becoming emergence uh, with some minor revisions and tweaks, which I thought were fantastic. Um, and that's how the partnership was kind of born. I mean, there's a lot more. I'm just trying to shorten it for you, but it was just, you know, I have, I know, I guess, I don't know blending the way he does or the way most of these master blenders do. I mean, it's the beginning of my cigar blending and manufacturing journey. So I can't assume that I'm going to know everything all at once. Um, so the partnership just made sense. I just felt that the company needed to go somewhere deeper in the industry to survive. I mean, I want this to be bigger for people and I want to be able to give people the same joy as I did through the cases through cigars. Um, and I think that we're, we're able to achieve that. And that's kind of where the name emergence spawned from. It's, you know, taking different components, bringing them together. You know, they're, the, the sum of their parts are greater than that of them alone. And something greater will emerge from that, which is the whole premise of emergence. It's Luciano Cigars and Peter James separately, you know, we're, we're two very different brands with very different skill sets. But together, when we come together, something greater spawned. Um, and that's how that's why we decided to name our first cigar Emergence. And I'm grateful for obviously all the lessons I'm learning and I'm continuing to learn. It's never it never ends. So, you know, you're always a student. I'm always a student. I'm sure you guys can attest to that. So yeah. um it's it's fun. I mean, it's like anything, you know, you guys are sportsmen. If you start play, if you play on a team, first time playing on a team, you know the team is filled with lots of talent, heart determination but you, you know you're not it takes a while for you guys to get adjust, adjusted and gel together but then yeah. once you gel that's when things start to happen and it's no different we're still getting to know each other we're still getting to understand where our strengths are where our weaknesses are how do we fill the gaps and how do we just become you know this like superpower if you will for the cigar industry um and so it's it's fun just trying to navigate that yeah the um it's interesting. I mean, we, talking earlier about um, when Justin was asking the question, you know, talking about this past PCA, you know, with the, you know, the people that over time you build relationships with people in this industry. And this is such a relationship driven industry. And, um, you know, Lu Luciano is one of those people that, you know, we've gotten to know more and more over the years. And, you know, he's even spent time here in Minnesota with us, you know, just not even for uh, in, in some cases, not even for sales events, just to chopping it up, just to be here. And um, I, I still and this is probably one of those memories that will stick with me forever and probably for you guys, too, that at this past PCA back in March, you know, we had had a very this was, I think, the last or second to last day of the trade show. We had had a very rough day and a very rough experience just prior to when we had our interview scheduled mm -hmm. with Luciano at his booth. And we get there and he can tell, like, as soon as Luciano sees me, he's like, something's wrong. What's, <laughs> what's, what's going on? And, you know, I, just, I didn't, I didn't want to, you know, name names or get into it with him or anything like that. But I just said, it's, I, I'm really struggling, just had a really rough you know, situation that uh, didn't go as planned, so on and so forth. And Luciano's like, screw the interview. Let's just sit and talk. And I mean, this was, is this is a chance, you know, that he has mm -hmm. on our channel, just like all the other interviews we do at PCA yep. to sit down and feature and, and showcase his brands and his new cigars and all this stuff. And he doesn't care about that at all. He just cares about us. He just wants to sit down and talk and by the, and we sat there for, we smoked this whole cigar. We there. smoked yeah, the whole the cigar whole and cigar, we, like, we were probably there an hour and a half yeah. and we just talked. Mm -hmm. We talked about family and life and all, all other kinds of stuff. And by the end of that conversation, I felt like a million bucks. And that's one of those examples to me of kind of what it's, it is different about, 
about him yeah. is that he wasn't interested in making the pitch on video for our YouTube channel. He wasn't interested in selling another shop somewhere in the country that may have seen our video on, on how about that cigars, YouTube channel or Facebook page. He was interested in getting me back to even because <laughs> he could tell I was like right. really jacked up and, and pretty, pretty pissed off. And, and even, even after that point, you know, it was, that was the same night afterwards was Luciano's yeah. media pool party where his whole family barbecued just for all the media people yeah, at the cook, house cooked and, for and, us, you know, Paulie and, and all those guys. Yeah. And, and we were having dinner, you know, and that's, that's kind of where we got a chance to meet with John Peter. There was at uh, exactly. Luciano's pool party, whatnot. And, you know, we're all smoking cigars, having good food. And, you know, I, I was uh, talking to John next to the pool for, I don't know, John, a couple hours or something, a good hour at least. And we were just chopping it yeah. up and, yeah, it was. Uh, you could see the camaraderie between Luciano and his team, and and just to add uh, John Peter in here with with that as well, and, yeah. and everybody else that Luciano has in the umbrella. Like you said, it's everybody's working together. All the little small pieces come together, and they create something that's just you know amazing. And and yeah. it was a good stuff. So, yeah, well, uh, other, oh, sorry, go ahead, Roll. Another thing about that, we were all separated, all three of us. Yeah, oh yeah. You were yeah. talking to Peter. You were at the table with the main yeah. guys, and I was talking to Paul and his wife. Yeah. And, uh, and the big man, and yeah, it was nice. It was a wonderful experience, one of the best experiences I've had down there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I guess this kind of long this leads to me asking you, and I and we've asked so many people this, John, is there you know, when it comes to the world of premium cigars, if you're doing accessories or you're doing other stuff and you want to get into the realm of of you know having your your own cigar for your own brand there's a lot of choices out there for places you can go that'll do, you know, make cigars for you. Um, mm -hmm. So it just, it, it's, it seems like this, this, uh, you know, relationship that you already had, you know, sort of developing with, with Luciano and, and knowing him, it, you know, what was that really the deciding factor was just, you know, who, who he is, that that made you want to continue working with him it played a big part um it's like i mean i saw so one of my other business ventures that i i started um my business partner there uh the one thing I, a piece of advice i gave him which will correlate to this was we were looking for a third partner at the time and um he was he's very green to entrepreneurship and he had all these people come in that were very interested and i said i said hey you know make no mistake i said you know money is you can find money anywhere you can find money from a bank uh, the government a grant uh you can find someone who's interested but that's that's not what we need here i said i need you to look at this like you're building a team a sports team if you will you know, you're not just going to go out and get, if you're, look, you're trying to build a hockey team, you're just going to go and get any left wing. You're the center man, you have a right wing, you're just going to go, hey, let's just, any right left wing that can skate and shoot a puck, you're going to put him on the team? No. You want a top tier player. And this is no different. Um, so for, for, for me, when I was looking at this, is okay, I've tried my hand at manufacturing myself. I've learned a lot. I failed, which is fine. I fail all the time. It's part of business. Um, now I'm, I now I know the direction I need to go. And I knew at that point I wanted somebody who was the manufacturer to not just manufacture my cigars, but to actually own the brand, a piece of the brand, because it was important for me for them to be just as invested in the brand so that their quality control, their desire, everything would go, would be simulated as if it was their own. Uh, and I just knew that that was the route. And it just so happened that he also had the ability to, to distribute and sell. Um, so he was definitely somebody that I really was had an eye on. Or I was like, okay, this is this is a good fit. But it was actually just to your point, Matt. When you have conversations, you understand it's it's more than just the business component. When you couple that with somebody that you want to play with, because remember, business is a game, just like a sport. And you're going to be playing with this person for a very long time, whatever the end goal is. Uh, so you, you better enjoy it. And so that for me was, yeah, that was the, the, the deal that, uh, that sold it for me. Yeah. 
Now, one of the pieces, you know, that I know you pay a great deal of attention to that's important to you and um, I think goes often underlooked um, and it, or overlooked is what I mean to say. And it's interesting because as I was putting this question on the list, I realized I don't think we've spent a lot of time ever talking about this on the show, but I think, and that's because I also tend to overlook it sometimes, but you know, the, the, the design, the look, the, 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 the statement that the visuals of, of the packaging of your cigar, um, make are, um, they're, they're unique and they are, um, they're, they're very, uh, uh what's the, it, precise. they're, Luxury yeah, pre precise and, and just, they really, it just really stands out and it, it speaks to you when you see it. That's at least it does to me yeah. now, what for you, when it, when you were working on this project, how deeply do you believe that visual design, uh, plays into a cigar? And how important is that to you? The cigar or the packaging or both? The, well, the, I mean, the, the, let's, let's, let's <laughs> go with first, the, the chicken or the egg. Let's go with the, <laughs> the packaging, the bands, uh, that kind of thing. Because obviously the construction, you want the cigar to be constructed proper, properly and look, you know, the way it's supposed to look. But, you know, do you, are you looking at the, the, do you want to see the finished product, like the finished cigar and the color of the wrapper leaf on that cigar before you start working on the color scheme for the packaging, or how does that all work? Yeah. First, first, well, first part of the question. Um, you guys, before that, for me, the details are extremely important in everything. There's beauty to be found everywhere, and I feel like you'd be, I'd, we'd be selling ourselves short if we didn't give every detail the attention it deserves even the packaging, um, you know, if you go out for dinner with your wife and you go to a hole in the wall and the food's terrific, it's a great night. You're not going to be mad at it at all. But if you take your wife to a restaurant and you're treated with the most incredible atmosphere, service, food, um, like everything is just up to par. You're going to leave saying to yourself, wow, they nailed it. I feel incredible. We had an amazing time. So I approach everything that same way. It's not just the packaging. It's the packaging, the cigar, the presentation, um, the way it's shipped, like when Justin opened the box, I'm very particular about how things are shipped and what kind of boxes they're shipped in. Like all of that has needs attention. Because again, this is somebody's moment that I have the opportunity of sharing. And I, I, I think if I don't give it the respect it deserves, then shame on me. You know, so the packaging is very important. The cigar is very important. The way it's manufactured is very important. The way it's stored is very important. Every single thing is very important. I don't overlook anything. Uh, and I think to the second part of that question, we didn't start designing, and I didn't start designing the actual packaging itself until I smoked the cigar. Okay. the final cigar yeah because i needed to know how it made me felt feel i couldn't put a visual on something unless i was feeling something so when i smoked that cigar it just everything just kind of came out it, it was not hard i just i knew exactly what the look and feel was the color scheme and so from that point it was pretty easy now it doesn't always happen that way but this time it did just felt right. Everything just felt right. I guess that goes to show the, 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 the partnership was right because everything along the way felt right. Well, it's interesting because I I'm really into, um, from, from afar, I admire them from afar. I'm really into fancy watches. I can't afford them, but I, I, I respect deeply respect them and love, uh, to learn about them and the way they look and things like that. And this rose gold color, you know, on the that's that's almost like a love child of rose gold and copper to me when I see it. Um, reminds me, there's a uh, there's a particular. I mean, there's there's a lot of watches with with uh, rose gold cases, but one in particular, uh, the the PK Royal Oak in rose gold, which is a 
phenomenal watch. It's an insanely expensive, be- absolutely gorgeous watch. But the the there the shade, and I know this is going to be really nitpicky, but the shade of rose gold that they end up achieving on that watch reminds me so much of of this packaging, and it's that it's got that elegance to it that um, really. It, it just it it evokes that same kind of feeling for me as the as as the the color that the shade of rose gold that they get on that watch uh it really evokes that for me yeah it was that, that the rose gold i would say was the biggest challenge because we were there's so obviously there's so many rose golds as you know i'm sure in the watch world too there's a ton yeah so try to find that right rose gold that was the perfect balance between masculine and feminine so that there was no determination of what it could be. Um, that was very important because it's a cigar for everybody. I don't yeah. want it to be labeled as a him or hers. So that that was, I'd say, the biggest challenge is finding that right rose gold and then mimicking that rose, across, rose gold across all materials. Well, you did a good job. Yeah. You did it. Thank you. And it may just be you know, mental suggestion, you know, but I do get, you know, hints of like leather aromas from the blend, the tobacco blend in the cigar. You know, it's not like overwhelming. It's not like, you know, some, some cigar blends have tobacco combinations that are just extremely heavy on like leather n- aromas and notes. This one is there's just, I'm just getting a little hint of it, but I like there's depth, there's boldness in the blend. Um, there's, there's a little bit of spice, but it's still nice and smooth. Um, it's burning really, really well, you know, construction's great. Very unique profile. For yeah. Sure. It's, it's different yeah. than anything I've had recently. It's in the last year or so. I don't want to butcher it guys. So I'll let, I'll let Luciano speak to the blend <laughs> yeah. because when he says it, it's a lot more romantic than when I, than when I get to it, but, uh, the depth, the deep and shallow blend uh and, I, and I'll, I'll just tell you this part and i hope i don't kill it sorry lucha if you see this or listen um so deep and shallow uh lucha was a fan of frequency and so when i was explaining the experience that i wanted the client to have is i wanted something where it would completely engulf your moment i don't w- i didn't want this cigar to be a cigar that you would smoke on a golf course or you know smoke when you're just focused on working or whatever. I don't want this cigar, a cigar that was going to completely engulf your moment where you didn't care about anything else in the world except your time, that moment in the cigar. And so when he was explaining to me deep and shallow, he was explaining how he was playing with frequency, highs and lows. Like when you listen to music, you have highs, lows, mids. Well, basically what he did with this cigar, deep and shallow, was remove the mid in such a way that would still keep the cigar balanced, but you would be guessing the entire time. You'd be so focused on what the heck the flavors, the, the, the flavors were and the complexity, how it all played together, that by the time you finished, your hour went by and you, you just still couldn't figure out what was going on. Uh, and I think he did that. He did that. He did that really well. And I know because we were at the trade show and I just couldn't, I, he gave me a bundle but I'm, I'm, I like to share, you know, cigars are, are meant to be shared. And so a friend of mine came to the booth all excited about his cigar. And he's like, you got to try it. It's launching. And I'm like, yes, please give it to me. I go, speaking of which, I want you to try a cigar that I'm thinking about, you know, partnering with, with Luciano on. Can you, do you mind trying it? And he sat there in the booth for, I think it was more than an hour because he was smoking a, a 52 by 7. It was a blender's roll. And there was 10 of us in the booth. We were having a chat, having a laugh. And he was sitting there quietly the entire time. Didn't say two words. Finally, he was done. He says, are you kidding me? <laughs> what the hell was that? He's like, I, what the hell was that? And I'm like, ah, dude, you got to go talk to, to the master. I have no idea. But it's crazy, right? He's like, yeah. Was I kind of don't want to watch my cigar now. Like, no, don't, don't be silly. Don't be silly. Don't be silly. But you know, that that's that to me is that's the fun. 
you know, I, I'm not, I was never really interested in, okay, let's make a cigar that was medium mild, uh, that had notes of caramel and toffee. And I don't know that, that, you know, I don't know. A lot of people like that. I, I, I don't, I want a cigar that is an experience that, mm-hmm. that, that evokes emotion. Um, I, there are great cigars for every single occasion in life. When I'm on the golf course, I know there's a, there's a specific cigar I like to smoke. You know, when I'm with friends, there's a specific cigar I like to smoke. But this cigar, this more, this is a celebratory cigar. I did something. I want to celebrate it. And I just want a moment to be taken away into out of my thoughts and into another world. And that's what this does. Yeah. Um, for you... Uh, and we'll say, I mean, we can talk specifically about this cigar, but also just kind of in general in your, um, you know, daily and weekly cigar smoking. Um, what's your favorite beverage, you know, to, uh, have together with a cigar? Water. (laughs) Oh, all right. I like it. I like, honestly, I like, um, so I used to be big into pairing. I, I went through that at some at, at one point, uh, and I'd I'd love to experiment with spirits and, and flavors and leaf, uh, but I've really slowed that the alcohol consumption. Um, so right now it's water, and I don't really I drink coffee probably ten. So Luch taught me this. I drink I used to drink coffee while I was smoking a cigar, and when he was here at the at the. I don't know what, we, what, we, what you want to call this. It's a speakeasy because it's illegal in Canada. I hope we're not live. Are we live? Yeah. Hope they don't come after me. Anyways, <laughs> he came by and I had a, I made him a coffee. I had a coffee and I was drinking the coffee while I was smoking a cigar. And he says, "You know, you should really drink the coffee ten to fifteen minutes before the cigar." And before I asked why, I knew this was a 20, 30 minute conversation because he's he, he goes very deep. <laughs> yeah. But I just I had to know. So I was like, okay, why? And so we went in this conversation about your palate, the salivary glands, uh, how that's reflected through the stomach. And and it was incredible to just learn this. And I by the way, I actually went because I'm crazy with my due diligence. I went on I went online. Uh, I even looked through some of my journals because I have a lot of biology journals and I was trying to understand the correlation to what he was saying and how our salivary glands fire depending on what we've eaten or drank. And so essentially when you're drinking the coffee, that high his acidity uh, on the palate stops your, some of your, your salivary glands from firing. So you're going to miss notes in the cigar. It's basically flattening the cigar. So it might taste good together, but that's only because the coffee's slightly muting the cigar profile. And then so after that 10 minutes, you'll start to notice that it'll fire back up again, and then the combination will give you a better profile. So really what you should be doing is, you said, just lightly cleansing the palate with a little bit of coffee 10 to 15 minutes before. And so ever since he said that, I don't drink coffee with my cigars anymore. I drink it 10 to 15 minutes before. But uh, either war- water or sparkling water, yeah, I'm I'm boring, man. Sorry to disappoint. No, that's not boring at all. I mean, when it comes to just daily enjoyment, I'll I'll do anything from coffee to spirits to whatever. But yeah, when it's when it's review time, it's it's water or sparkling water. Water. Yeah, that's the only way to go. So you can really get everything. Um, so, but if uh, I'll, yeah, I'll give you this, if I do, if I if I am gonna drink and smoke a cigar, and this is oddly enough. Uh, I actually prefer Jose Cuervo, uh, is it the family reserve. Yeah. It's a sipping to kill. Yeah. I like it. So, so John, you said you're at this speakeasy, huh? And I, I, we had a little bit of talk about that, but you got all kinds of stuff going on in that building. So you know, I know you're like the entrepreneur kind of spirit. You got a bunch of stuff going on and you care to like, you know, give us a little taste of what's, uh, what you got cooking up over there. Yeah. Okay. So, where is this aired, by the way? Is this, this is probably not shown in Canada, right? We're fine. Right? <laughs> um, so basically, when we moved all of our fulfillment, warehouse logistics, all that to, to the U.S., just because it made more sense, um, I had all this space back here. And so rather than leasing it, getting a tenant and just giving it a space to someone to use, I said, you know, it would be really nice for 
for a group of guys to have a space that they could enjoy a premium cigar and good conversation, sort of, you know, practicing that art of stoicism and just getting great minds together and, uh, and enjoying a little bit of time together. And so we made one room on our second floor, which is probably, you know, six, six, 700 square feet. We turned it into a cigar lounge, just a small, you know, 12 seater cigar lounge, but very elegant. Um, and then it grew <laughs> and it grew and it grew. And now it's the whole second floor, uh, which is great because it gives a lot of really good men an opportunity uh, to find something that they don't find here, uh, which is camaraderie, a place to enjoy a cigar, especially because it's super cold in the winters. Um, but more so the camaraderie, man. I mean, yeah, we went from just having 10 guys in a matter of a couple months to 30 and then, you know, up to 60. And these are just really great guys and, and they enjoy themselves here. It's, it's such a, honestly, it's such a joy to watch to come in when I come in here and I see a group of guys, I'm talking just, you know, all over the spectrum, you know, between yeah. the ages of 30 and 65 and everybody's just laughing and, having a good chat and enjoying a cigar, um, which I'm in one of the little rooms now, which is a four person call it our business room. So we don't take phone calls or do any work in the main room. So if you have to take a phone call, you come into the business room, which is a little smaller room just for respect of people's yeah. time. But before guys come home, you know, three thirty, four o'clock, most of them are entrepreneurs. They come in here, they disconnect from their work. They get that hour of their time so they can go home to their families calm, cool, and collected. And yeah. there's, it's just, it's, it's awesome. Um, and then downstairs, which is my latest endeavor, we talked about how I like turning my passions into, into business because I, I want to have fun. And one of my passions is, is biohacking. Um, I, I, I'll just go down the, I'll just tell you a little bit of the story of how it started and how the two correlate. So, I was 31 years old. I played a lot of hockey, kind of semi-pro junior junior hockey up until the ages of 23 or 24 years old. And I was a goalie. So that much hockey in my life, uh, my hips, my hips were terrible. Um, I had bone degeneration, impingement, arthritis. Um, it was hard to walk, hard to get out of bed. Uh, I had to take a lot of you know, medications topicals, all that stuff to just function. There were times when I'd be able, my friends and my hip would slightly come out of its place and I'd have to have my friends position me and pop it back in. It was <laughs> super uncomfortable, especially in a nightclub. It was no. hilarious. One. It was bad. Anyways, uh, I went to see a couple of hip surgeons, saw three of the top surgeons in, in, in the province and two of the three recommended full hip replacements at the age of 31. And the other one recommended an arthroscopy. But one of them said to me, and he's really stern. He's like, son, call me son. I was like, okay. <laughs> Your hips look like they're 65. I'm like, uh, 31. He's like, yep. He goes, that's how much wear they've seen. He goes, you need to get them replaced. I go, okay. So how, how often do I have to get them replaced if I get them replaced now? He's like, every, 15 years, I'll have to do another replacement. I said, okay, so I'll be 46. I go, that's just crazy. I, I, goes, I go, there's no way, you're telling me there's no way my hips will heal on their own. He says, nope, the damage has been done. They will not heal. And I just, I thought that was my, my moment for me. I'm like, this, this guy's fucking crazy. Yeah. You're telling me my body, that this complex biology, given the right circumstances, cannot heal on its own? I just, I didn't buy it at all. So that took me down my rabbit, that rabbit hole of, of biohacking. And I'll say to this day, I've never had a surgery or a hip replacement and I can pretty much go toe to toe with any, anybody on the ice or off. And I have no problems running, no problems walking anymore, all of that. And that's all just understanding my biology and me making the conscious choice to say, Hey, yeah, I can change it. And so, what we did downstairs is there's a lot of people, there's a lot of misinformation out there and there's a lot of information period. 
And often nobody really knows, or sometimes we don't even know what we can trust, what's valid, what's scientifically proven, yeah, uh, what's hearsay, what's opinion. So I thought, hey, you know what? Because I was once like this too. And I have a lot of people who ask me the same question. You're 41 years old. You don't act it. You don't look it. And I'm like, yeah. I tell, I always, I'm always forthcoming. This is exactly what I do. But most people get overwhelmed with that information. So I thought, hey, why don't we create a facility? We won't go full into biohacking because it's so vast. You can get lost in it, and it can be overwhelming for most people. Um, so let's just create a center that gives people immediate effects so they can see what this does. And they can see how they can actually change and may, it'll make them feel better. They can live longer, live stronger. They can optimize their health, hack their health and, and optimize their performance. And so that's what we did. We built uh, a, a private facility, members only. Uh, we don't put time limits on your usage. So you just, you pay a monthly fee, you come in, you use the facility, you use all the tools. So we have you know, sauna, cold plunge, red light therapy, grounding therapy, oxygen therapy, uh, hydrogen therapy, and PMF therapy. And then we also have an uh, FST on, on site as well. Uh, and it's just a place where you can come and take care of your body. And then some of the guys upstairs who are members of the, the general facility can use both. So they can take care of their body, feel nice and relaxed, and come upstairs for a cigar. So I'm trying to see how... I confuse the two, even though most people say, well, cigars aren't healthy. Mm-hmm. And I do, I do have something to say about that because I mean, I'm crazy about my wearables and how I track my body and some of the best HRVs that I've got, some of the best resting hearts, heart rates I've had, uh, have been when I'm having a cigar. Yeah. So, like I track all of it, the data. And I've shown a friend of mine who's actually a, a general practitioner, a doctor, I'm like, you can't deny that this isn't proof. I go, look at my day, look at my H- my HRV, my uh, resting heart rate, look at all my data because you have it right here, and then look what it does for that hour I'm having a cigar. And and so I, I'm trying to see how we can balance between the two because I do believe that, you know, from a mental standpoint and slightly from a physical standpoint, that it's not. I mean, now, if you're inhaling cigars, that's... Right, a whole different it's gonna be. Yeah, it's a, this is it's a totally different ballgame, completely different. But, you know, there is also studies that show that uh, low doses of nicotine stimulate brain function. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I don't trust the, the, the data too much. I know FDA came out with a, 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 probably one study, the first study ever on cigars alone, excluding cigarette tobacco, which was really great for the industry. Yeah, I think that's a good starting point, but I'd love to see some more because I know that there's a lot of even mental health uh, attributes to having to, to enjoying a premium cigar. So that's where I, that's kind of what I got for you, Justin. I love it. <laughs> sorry, honestly, sorry to go off so hard on that. No, because, I love because honestly, the you know that's one of the things that um, government officials, mainly government health officials, and this is true in the U.S. and Canada. Mm-hmm. They don't understand the the that <clears throat> that premium cigars, the the world of the cigar lounge, if you will. Premium hand rolled cigars have nothing whatsoever to do with the nicotine fix. It's about it could be meditation, it could be camaraderie, but both of those things are are beneficial to one's health. And if you're smoking premium cigars the way they're meant to be enjoyed, which is puff the cigar into your mouth and and then exhale it, you know, it, the smoke doesn't go, you're not inhaling that cigar directly into your lungs like like people who smoke cigarettes. Mm. And or, they or vape. Or vape, yeah. And I, I mean, we're talking about 100% natural tobacco from Nicaragua, Ecuador, Dominican Republic, Costa Rica, so on and so forth. That is, it's tobacco, water, and vegetable gum. And the, and the, the, the mental benefits are so vast that, but government health officials are, obsessed with expediency 
and they're also lazy. And so are most, you know, uh, politicians in the U.S. and Canada. And therefore, the, if they're going to do tobacco legislation, they're going to lump all of it together because they need they need it to be done quickly and they don't want to put in very much work to it. So they're not going to take the time to worry about whether premium hand-rolled cigars are different than cigarettes. They're just going to put tobacco legislation out there and say to the, the citizens, we'll just deal with it. Yeah. That's your problem now. Just, just, and I know that regulations are far more strict in Canada. What part of Canada are you in, by the way? Ontario. So I'm, I'm just uh, 20 minutes outside Toronto, about 10 minutes from Pearson Airport. The, the regulations are just, they're insane. Yeah. It's, that's all there is to it. They, it it's very clear they do not want uh, premium cigars anywhere nope. in this country. Nope, they don't. And they're going to try to price people out of it. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's it. What's astounding? The most astounding is we fought. We fought tooth and nail for it. Is the plain packaging laws that came into effect a little while ago, and they were so adamant about them. And the the basis of this packaging was we want to ensure that no tobacco, no cigars are sold to minors. And the packaging is a direct correlation to uh, enticing a young consumer t- to a, to buy a cigar. And I I was like, how many cigar shops have you been to? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How many have you sat in front of? Shit. I mean, you you had kids dying from the jewel, from vaping. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't see you guys playing packaging vaping. Yeah. But you're you're playing packaging a premium cigar. I haven't seen. I I, I mean I'm 41. I, I'm 20 years now. I have not seen one child come up to me at, at a tobacco shop say, "Hey, can you go in there and buy me a cigar?" Yeah, like, never they, like we used to do, like they used to do when we were kids at the yeah. convenience stores. For yeah, I got it, it's, it's it's yeah, it's a different agenda. It's bullshit, and and we see right through it. I mean, if you don't see through it, you got to wake up. People got to wake up because these are these are politicians' personal agendas for whatever their reasons are. These are their personal agendas, and they're pushing it. From, and they're pushing it from their ego. Maybe yeah. it's their past trauma. Maybe it's something. But their their egos are driving an entire industry away. That you know, maybe ten years from now we'll see that uh, they they'll, they'll, somebody will take the initiative, come back out and say, hey, actually, you know what, cigars they're actually not that bad for you if utilized or consumed in the proper manner. Yeah, you know, just like just like they're doing, and I'm just bringing this up because it's relevant. You know, uh, MDMA and psilocybin, which is mushrooms, how they're using it for PTSD, yeah. and how it's now being approved as a pharmaceutical drug in but you just banned it not too long ago i, I have well, a feeling that's going to happen with tobacco too here's another super interesting thing about psilocybin and and i I'm sorry about the rabbit hole but i actually love this rabbit hole is mdma and psilocybin have been proven multiple times over the last i don't know 10 15 years to be one of the most effective ways for people to stop using cigarettes yeah i mean that's mm-hmm. Among other things, too. It helps with PTSD. Among, yeah. yeah. Like, there's so many other things. Anxiety, yeah. depression. The success rate is just astronomical. You can't, it's like you can't deny it. See, this is the point is, is when I was saying politicians are driving this and for whatever their own personal reasons or agendas are, back when they, when they had banned MDMA and psilocybin and even LSD, which LSD is coming back as, you know, being having having really good success in certain areas, you just had people who who had a, who wanted to fight a war on drugs, and all drugs were drugs. And if one drug was classified as a drug, mm-hmm. then to your point, like cigarettes, all tobacco is evil. Tobacco. All drugs are evil. That's right. Right. So, I just feel like we they haven't explored premium cigars enough, like they're doing now with MDMA, psilocybin, LSD, and I think that we have to get them there. They need to yeah. do that. Somebody, or if not them, private funding has to say, let's do some some studies on the mental front, but also on the physical. Yeah. Look, I, you, I'll go in front of, I'll take any blood panel. I'll do any EKG. I'll do any test you want me to do. I smoke, smoke two cigars a day. I have, My VO2 max is probably better than that of, of a 25-year-old. So how can you look me in the eye and tell me, sir, it's bad for you. Don't smoke cigars. Okay. 
Yeah. You can say it, but it's uh, it's not true. It's not. It's not. Well, I just I am the proof. Yeah. I'm the same. I, so I'm I'm almost 53 and I just had a doctor appointment about a month ago. I've got another one in a couple of days. And my doctor when he does my my lab work, uh, blood tests and urinalysis, he's he's still he's like I can't believe that you drink whiskey and smoke cigars because you're and, and I eat shit tons of red meats and bacon and cheese and i my my numbers by conventional standards like cholesterol numbers and hemoglobin and you know all that stuff but my blood pressure it's it's like perfect like low end of of the best ranges you can get and he just shakes his head he's like i i I don't know what to tell you he's like all the stuff you do i tell all my patients to never ever do I tell them to to eat, you know, small amounts of red meat, and to not consume any tobacco products, and to not drink hard liquor and things like that. And you do all those things, and and I'm more like three to five cigars a day. I used to be five to seven cigars a day, but I've cut back. Uh, but still, the my my lab tests don't lie. No. Oh. You know, I so someone said in the comment there. You know, ketamine is also as a, being used as a therapy for depression. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, again, some of these things that aren't explored. And to your point, a lot of the diagnoses that we have, it, it has a lot to do. The correlation is ment- your mental, the mental aspect, where you are mentally. If you're a person that uh, you know consumes a lot of alcohol, eats poorly, or you know whatever the case may be and you're, you you suffer from anxiety, a lot of those numbers in your blood panel will show differently yeah. than, so this is where I think the cigar comes into play because I mean, it's, it's like you said, very therapeutic. It's almost like a, a form of meditation. Yeah. Um, and I guys, I can go, I can go into the rabbit hole of meditation and biohacking and how you can change your uh, physiology through your, your mind and all that. But I won't, cause I know this is a cigar. <laughs> Uh, yeah, podcast, we can, but we I definitely go into that because <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I mean, if you want to bring up the book of magic of believing and all that stuff, I mean, that you could totally go down that rabbit hole too. Yeah, no, I, I, I <laughs> look, there's just there's too yeah. much evidence now, like, there's right. just too many, there's too many good people mm-hmm. with with financial backing showing and, and doing the studies to ignore it. There's just right. too many, like, Dr. Joe Sprenza, I just saw him at the, at the biohacking conference, and just the when when he first started. People would call him crazy. He was ridiculed, um, you know, by so much, by so much media, so many doctors and scientists, and and, and you look at it now and you just laugh because you you cannot deny the evidence. He's literally people are literally curing cancer by themselves. They're literally curing um, scoliosis. They're, like they're they're literally curing themselves just through meditation. And there's a lot more to that. I'm not saying that if you just sit down and meditate. You're going to be cured. It's you have to understand the process of your brain waves and how to get from, you know, your 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 beta brain waves to your theta to your alpha, uh, gamma, and so forth. Where you, it takes a long time. It's a lot. It's a lot of practice. But these are where you start. You start encouraging your lymphatic system, the lymphatic part of your brain, to start working for you. Um, so, I, I mean, I just I'm hard pressed to believe that it's just one thing or another. I think the the main thing is, as you were talking about food, how you eat bacon and cheese and your cholesterol. I, I, I think, I think, I don't think that's true at all. I mean, I think most general practitioners are trained in a certain way. And yeah. most of the time that way is a very old way. Oh, and and yeah. so it's not, it's mm-hmm. not their fault. I'm not blaming them. They don't know. Yeah, just like you said, you're do- like I've I've gone to see doctors that would say one thing, and I'd show them the, the next the proof the next day, and be like, and I went to my GP once, and I said, hey, can I uh, I need a blood panel, but not the cheap blood panel that the government pays for. I'll pay for it. I need like an extensive one. Yeah. He's like, no, you don't. I said, what? I I said I want one. I'll pay for it. He's like, no, you won't. You're fine. I saw your blood panel from uh, from four months ago. You're okay. So it's not that. I think they just don't know, and I think. Rather than trusting a, a, just your GP, do the work. I mean, 
man, pick up a biology book. The things you can learn about your body in just a simple biology book, uh, it's yeah. astounding. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, it's the the old school thinking is there. There are so many, and one of the that's one of the benefits of the information age that we're in today is that you can yeah. you can get access to um, studies that are far more independent than government sponsored studies or studies in the past that were all paid for and in the back pockets of pharmaceutical companies and things like that. You know, there's a lot of people out there who are doing and have been for 10 to 15 years, um, independent studies, multivariate analysis, and um, where they, they do it not with, because if you go into a study having already in your mind a means to an end, like a pharmaceutical, a pharmaceutical company would or government uh, entities would, you know, if they go into it saying this is the result we're hoping to get, then they're going to take whatever measures they can to skew the results in their favor. Where mm -hmm. if, you, if you just have independent researchers whose only goal is to get to whatever the truth might be, then that's the best way to go about it. And the fact that there is access to that information, and don't get me wrong, I and I know you know the same thing, there there is a lot of bad information out there on the internet, but it it takes, like you said, John, it takes work. You have to put in the work to get to the information that's relevant, that's timely, that's um, that's peer reviewed and and reliable and things like that. And it's, uh, but the fact that we have access to that information today, um, where our parents didn't have access to that information, our grandparents sure as hell didn't have access to that information. They just, their doctor told them X, Y, and Z, and they were like, well, my, he's my doctor, he must know best. Let's not forget those pharmaceutical companies there to make money. Yeah. They don't want us to go herbalistic or, or other or find the answers in our bodies. Right. They no. want us to use a medication they that to, they're making money off of. And put a band-aid on it, you know. So you gotta keep on using it, keep on paying the money. And like, you know, yeah. that's the whole opiate crisis, everything. There's so many other options out there. I mean, if you took away like Vicodin, op or uh, what was it, Dilatas, all the other yeah. opiates that are out there, half the nation would be dope sick right now. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like that's just basically what it's come down to. It's all about the money for them. And now like people are actually stepping up and saying, Hey, this isn't the way there's another way that could actually be way more beneficial to people. And that's where we really need to get back to is our roots. And like, actually like yeah. getting back to like being a normal civilization where none of that stuff matters. You know what I mean? And that's, that's where really what it comes down to at the end of the day. And not to go full conspiracy theory, but there is a reason that 92% of all commercial airtime is for pharmaceuticals. That's a that's a fact. Ninety two percent of all commercial airtime on television, radio, so on and so forth, is pharmaceuticals. Yeah, it's not a so I I want to correct. It's not a conspiracy because I mean it's not. Think about this for a second. I know you want to be cautious, but when you have the data, I mean it's like any other business. The medical industry is a business, is it not? It's there, to, it's there to earn income. So any way it can lock you into an ecosystem of feeding them money, they're going to do it. And they're not. maybe they're not doing it maliciously. I'm not saying that they're doing it maliciously. But if you have diabetes, they're going to come up with something to treat diabetes. And their goal at that point is to keep you on that medication because that keeps income coming in for them. It's a business they have plan. Simple. They, have it's simple. Answer, they have to answer to their shareholders. Right. You, I mean, we as people have to wake up and just say, oh, OK, I see that. I see that now and realize that, hey, I can actually cure myself from diabetes. Yeah. Maybe stop eating junk food. Maybe keep just eat real food, clean food and yeah. see how quickly you can come off that medication. And I'm and I'm going to be so bold to say I don't care if people ridicule me for saying it because I've seen it happen in many of people who are on insulin shots have to take it on multiple medications, and all they did was clean up their diet with and incorporate a little bit of exercise, I mean like walking, and come off their insulin completely. Yeah. You, I mean, it's just, it's it's like we, we, we as a society, I mean, you guys, 
you get it, but we as a society of people just have to wake up. That's it. Just say, hey, look, the, med the medical field is there to help us when we need it. But now it's got, got a little too far where it's, it's providing all these band-aids and crutches that maybe it's instead of just fixing the topical, we got to get to the root yeah, and fix it ourselves. And then we won't need that. Yeah. So I got a question for Justin and Raul. What's that, Matt? Is it time? Is it time for what? Wait, I still don't have. Can you guys give me a watch? I don't know what time it is. Oh, uh, well, well, let's ask him one more question. You have one more question on the list. I want to see. It. I want to hear. Wait, his wait, you got one more question. The, the What's bottom your bottom one? Yeah. Oh, I've I, I've I've had that question on the list for for months and months and months. I don't always ask it, but I think I think John might be a good candidate yeah, for this I question. Do, especially Go for the way it. he is. Um, what's your least favorite thing about the industry? The scar industry right now. And I'm not talking about the government stepping no. on us and, and uh, just your least favorite thing about the cigar industry. I would say the smoke and mirrors. Oh, I like that. Answer. I'm a, I'm a very transparent, and authentic mm -hmm. person. And maybe sometimes people like it. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they, they get uncomfortable, but, um, I didn't realize how much smoke and mirrors there would be in the industry, which I know, you know, in that other, other industries, in, any other, in the industry, in any, any part of the world, you know, people wear many faces and wear, wear many masks, but more so here. I've been in other industries, few of them. Um, and I'd rather somebody, you know, just be authentic, even if it means hurting someone's feelings. We're all adults. Yeah, I agree with you 100% on that one. Yeah, that's that's a great answer. We're all adults. Let's just be Most, yeah. Let's just be honest. At least by age. <laughs> yeah. So I think David Floyd has an idea. David, oh, I th I th think he does. I think David's right. I, I think I, it I is now time for this week's Numero de los Muertos. And as always, Numero de los Muertos brought to us by our friends at Smoke In. I'm Steve here with the Goat to tell you about Smokin's Cigar of the Month Club. Every month, I personally handpick five premium cigars. Another great feature is our Double Down Club. With a simple check mark, you can get double this great selections every month and save $10. Every month, there's a special discount code where if you like any of the selections, you can get them at a special discounted rate for our Cigar of the Month Club members. We've made it super simple. All you gotta do is log into your account. There's a little green button there. If it's green, you're active. You wanna take a break, going out of town, simply hit the button and you'll deactivate your membership. We get the stuff out on the 28th of every month. Our membership bills on the 28th and we get every member's package out on the 28th if it's a shipping day. All delivered to your door for $34.95. Five great reasons on what makes Smoking Cigar of the Month Club the best club out there. Check it out. Peace. All right. Numero de los Muertos, episode 246. This one is... It, so the number's tricky on this one because okay. uh, reports and, like, uh, legitimate sources vary widely. Okay. From thir And this is not just, like, per year, deaths per year from this cause. Okay. It's deaths recorded throughout all cases of this particular cause of death throughout history wow and they range they range from um they range from 10 to 300 but a really really uh what i consider to be uh authentic reliable source uh says that there are around 30 cases historic in history that have been verified as this particular cause of death. Peter, you know how to play, right? So we're going to do 20 questions. Basically, we're trying to find the cause of death between Raul, yourself and me and the uh, viewers and uh, David Floyd's first guess is that on by a hippopotamus. Sat on by a hippopotamus. <laughs> no, no. Were animals involved? Uh, no. Is this uh, sexual? Oh. Sexual 
not sexual in in nature or involvement so in any no way. autoerotic if, if yeah no yeah, none of that none, none of that. that okay no uh, no anal beads sorry raul i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> uh is it work related uh no jesus santos good evening brother What's struck up, by brother? lightning not struck by lightning no okay is vehicle involved uh, vehicles are not involved. What about food from Thomas Darling? Food involved? Uh, not directly, no. Okay. Mother Thanks. Nature? Uh, yeah, Mother Nature, in a, yeah, in a weird way, yeah. Okay. Are autos involved? Nope, no vehicles. But Mother Nature, that's in a way? In, sort of. It's not a disease? Not a disease. Not it's it's not not a vi- not a virus not, not a over medication not a pathogen not not medication not um firearms no no firearms was it an act against another person no okay so is it, it was is it this violence a, no violence no violence random accident uh I mean tech technically I guess yeah but not really. God, that's a tough one. Um, I'll say no in the general sense of the word accident. No. Okay. Is it weather related? Not weather related. Okay. So, let's see. Not a virus, not anything. Is this worldwide? Yes. Yes. So, this does happen everywhere. And it's on land? Uh, Yeah. Okay. Not falling out of something. Or... Not animal. You said animals, right? Not animal inflicted. Yeah, no, no animals. Okay. Hmm. Licking frogs says pickle. Nope. Trees falling on people. Nope. Hail death. Uh, nope. Hail weather is not involved. Quicksand. Not quicksand. Okay. Hmm. You said there's only thirty-five deaths. Well, that. Depending on which source you look up, the they range from some people say only ten, some people say upwards of three hundred. The most reliable source I found uh, said it's around thirty in history. Mosquitoes, not mosquitoes. <laughs> so I think thirty and a lot of people Jesus. die from mosquitoes every year. It's a long They're time right. for only thirty people. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, the first, uh, the first known account of a case of this type was in 1641. Whoa. Watching a cigar podcast. Thanks, Pickle. <laughs> is, it, is it overeating? Uh, not directly, no. Not a poisonous plant? Not, nope, not a poisonous plant. Okay. Hmm. People got too stoned? Nope. <laughs> Drugs. You have to deal with that every day. Drugs are not involved. <laughs> Roll was a firefighter. Oh, let's see. Can't be spouse because it'd be a lot more than that. No. It's not. <laughs> we have a winner. We do? Look at that. Thomas Darling, spontaneous combustion. What? I'm just really, so a Hail Mary right there. Phenomenon wow. Known, known as SHC or spontaneous human combustion. Um date all the way back to 1641. Uh, the phenomenon gained wider exposure in the 19th century um, when critics, uh, so Charles Dickens used it to kill off one of the characters in his novel called Bleak House. Uh, critics accused Dickens of legitimizing something that didn't exist. He pointed to research showing 30 historical cases. Uh, more recently, cases of SHC have been suspected when police and fire department officials have found burned corpses with unscathed furniture around them. Uh, The most recent case, uh, an Irish coroner ruled that spontaneous combustion caused the 2010 death of 76-year-old Michael Faraday, whose badly burned body was discovered uh, in a room with virtually no fire damage whatsoever. Uh, Because the human body is composed mostly of water and its only highly flammable properties are fat tissue and methane gas, the possibility of SHC being an actual phenomenon is remote. Um, and then it goes on to say, um, the human body has to reach, uh, or wait, um, 
proposed cause, okay, here, the proposed causes of the phenomenon include bacteria, static electricity, obesity, stress, and most consistently, excessive consumption of alcohol. Hmm. Uh, one hypothesis came from British biologist Brian J. Ford, who in August 2012 described his experiments um, in the magazine New Scientist. According to Ford, a buildup of acetone in the body which can result from alcoholism, diabetes, or a specific kind of diet can lead to spontaneous combustion. So, follows that up says big time biohacking. Big time biohacking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just uh, trying to figure out how that would how that would happen. It's got to get pretty hot. Yeah, your body's got to get pretty hot for that to happen. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand it. <laughs> Interesting. Um, hmm. So, so that's a weird one. Yeah, it's a weird one. That was this week's Numero de los Muertos. All right, it is time to reveal. Oh, oh, yeah, what's up? What does he win? The cigar pack. We don't. We don't always give stuff away, but we can. We can give something away to Thomas. Absolutely. Yeah, let's give something away to Thomas. He nailed it. I'm gonna give him. and we're gonna give him a case. We have to. Give oh him my a case. gosh, that's fantastic! Wow, that's that's awesome! Uh, wow, man, we really appreciate that. Thomas, do me a favor. Send an email to Matt at howaboutthatcigar dot com, and I will get you. I'll get your uh, your information and get that over to John Peter, and we will uh, get you a lovely prize pack. And thank you, John Peter, so much for that. Yes. Really appreciate it, brother. You're very welcome. That's awesome. So. I'm going to tell you, you've had this before. Spirit of Mystery Reveal. I've had this before. Yes. So this is a 12-year-old whiskey. I've had this before. I've had it before. It's really hard to nail down. Is it? Do you like it? I like it. Funny thing is, you hated it before. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. What is it? Show us, Roll. What you got? Show us the screen. What is that? Hoot and Young, okay. Twelve year, okay. Matt, we've had we had this at Sodi's. We had a. I did. I didn't like it at all. No, you didn't. You talked a lot of shit about it. Wow. Um, we had hey. it at Sodi's for a cigar uh, mixer. Ouch. And uh, Matt was every actually, everybody said they loved the cigar more than they loved the bourbon. Yeah, the cigar. I thought the Hoot and Young cigars were really good. I was not a fan of the whiskey. Uh, tonight, I like it. I don't know what to tell you. And, and if you don't know, John, Raul doesn't drink, but he's got probably a bigger liquor collection than most people that do drink. Yeah. So he, <laughs> he's got all kinds of bottles over there, and we do this every week with the Spirit of Mystery. Give Matt a different type of a spirit to try on the show. You that Good job on the curveball. You really threw me a, a for a loop this time. This, hey, just goes to show. Always try everything more than once yeah. before you give a final judgment Especially on it. Especially those anal beans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. He had to go. I don't know why you had to go there. <laughs> I left it alone for a long time. Oh. All right. Let's jump into the lightning round brought to us by J.C. Newman Cigar Company, America's fa- oldest family-owned premium cigar maker, creators of the popular Brick House. Perla Del Mar, Diamond Crown, and The American. J.C. Newman Cigar Company operates out of their 113-year-old El Rolo Cigar Factory in historic Cigar City, Tampa, Florida. For more information on their cigars or visitor experience, please visit jcnewman.com. All right, some quick non-cigar-related questions for you, sir. Um, If you were about to get into a fight, what would your soundtrack music be? Into a fisticuff. You, mano y mano, one, one other person. Johnny Cash. Ooh. Um, it's got to be Johnny Cash. God's going to cut you down. Oh, I like it a lot. That's an excellent choice. That might be the first Johnny Cash. I think so. I haven't, I, that's, that's a good one. That's really really good props up to you that's, Johnny. that's my base that's my my batting walkout song so okay. i mean i i get really yeah i get jazzed up with that one nice i love it i love it um let's go let's raul he's not gonna answer this one look at him 
<laughs> oh, I suppose. I suppose. Him. I suppose. Put his face and his arms on. Again. You don't. You don't do. <laughs> you don't do fast food, do you, J JP? Not normally, but occasionally. I have two small right. boys, so I'm gonna. We're gonna throw this at you. Okay. What is the most underrated fast food there's out there, and what's the most overrated fast food out there? Underrated. I'm gonna go with the Whopper. Okay. Okay. Burger King Whopper, Burgers, super yep. underrated. Overrated. I mean, I don't. I haven't tried that many. Here in Canada, we're restricted, right? So, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with the Big Mac. Okay. Hmm. I like it. I'm not a fan. You don't get enough. I don't get. I don't get enough. There's no not enough meat. They're like these tiny little thin right. patties. It's all bread. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was never a fan of the Big Mac. I don't like the sauce on it. Well, it's all it, it's just all bread and lettuce. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah, I don't like it. Not a fan. Good call. If I want bread and lettuce, I'll order a Caesar salad. <laughs> you don't like the special sauce. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Justin. All right, John, you ready? Yep. The zombies are coming. Hurry up and hide. You get three people from the cigar industry to be on your zombie apocalypse survival squad. Who do you pick and why? Oh my God. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now keep in mind, I don't know everybody, so I'm going to pick the people that I see. see the biohacking role. It doesn't have to be cigars anywhere, anywhere in your industries that you are. in. No, it does have to be cigars. cigars. Okay. Yeah. It's gotta be cigars. Okay. I guess it uh, Change it up for him. He ain't that Michael pretty. Herklotz, he he's a fun guy. I see him on uh, on the gram a lot. He's he's, he's a character. I, I definitely like to hang with him. Yeah, uh, great dresser. He's a great dresser. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He'll bring the threads and the drums. So at least we have some entertainment too, right? <laughs> Luciano for sure, because we're gonna need someone to keep us staying. He'll keep us grounded. There you go. He's good to talk to and just. Keep us level. And I got one more. I got to bring my business partner, Adrian, man. He's fun. There you go. <laughs> I like go. it. He's yeah. fun. I like it. You guys are going to have a good time. That's a good group. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're going to have to deep... be over there trying to teach him how to roll cigars and like just keep them all, yeah. like, you know. I'd honestly like to sit Luciano down with her clocks and just sit there and watch. Yeah. Talk. <laughs> I'd want to record all those conversations too. Absolutely. That should be a podcast right there. Right. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we can make that happen. Yes, um, all right. Let's jump into this week's notable smokables brought to us by Don Doroteo cigars, a brand with both purpose and passion dedicated to creating change from within by developing their own land. They are able to own the entire process throughout the life cycle of the plant. They methodically carry out each step, ensuring that the final product is of the finest quality. The salt of the earth lines, Piedra Viva and Piedra Angular are available now at Don Doroteo retail partners. Visit dondoroteo.com to learn more. All right, so John Peter, each week, all of us name a cigar that we smoked recently that was notable to us. Now, this could be a cigar that's been on the market for decades that we smoked for the first time in a long time, or a cigar that's brand new to the market that you've smoked for the first time ever. Now, obviously, you're smoking mostly your own stuff and probably a lot of Luciano stuff too, but if you you know, got a chance recently to jump outside of those portfolios. Is there something you smoked recently that really stood out to you? You would think I'd be smoking my own cigars and Blue Channel cigars, but not yet. Nah. <laughs> uh, uh, you know what? Yeah, Casa Cuba. That was that for me. Oh, well, yeah. Yep. That's a great one for me. Mm -hmm. Every time I, I mean, I'm there often, but every time I come, I hit Corona and I grab a bundle. And I just love them. Yeah, it's a good cigar. Uh, Raul, what's your notable this week? Well, as you all know, I've been a fan of one particular cigar, and I think, I'm not sure, and please forgive me if it's not true, it might have been one of the last ones Luciano rolled for the other company he used to work for. Yeah. He used to be involved with. Yeah. I got a box, another box of La Petitiere mm -hmm. PCA. Oh, the originals. The 
<laughs> that thing is so damn good. Yeah. It's yeah. You, so good. When we were at your place last weekend around the fire, you mm-hmm. smoked one of those. Oh. And that's, so yeah, I know because you bought like crazy amounts of boxes yeah. for that cigar. Yeah. It's, it's a really nice one. Uh, Justin, what was your notable this week? I'm going to go with the warped nicotina. Oh, yeah. I haven't had that one yet. And I like a lot of warped stuff. It's kind of my profile a little bit sometimes when I'm in the mood for something yeah. creamy and light and a little, you know, different. So that's what I'm going with. Nice. Uh, I went kind of back in time for my notable. It was um, the La Aurora Preferitos, um, the, the double perfectos that come in those aluminum, aluminum tubes. Yeah. It, the green one, the Emerald Double Perfecto, and I smoked one of those. Uh, it was an old one. I mean, I probably had it for five or six years, maybe maybe longer. Um, grabbed it out of my humidor a few days ago, and it's still still a really good cigar. So, and fortunately, uh, tubos you never know. Are they going to be? Are they yeah. going to have mold inside? But uh, this one was in great shape and smoked really nice. So. Uh, you uh you really can't go wrong with that one. That was a nice nice uh cigar. There's a thank you from thank Thomas you, Thomas. Darling. Oh, Thomas, yeah, thank you. For that. Thank you. Before yeah. tonight, he did not know who John was or his company. You're why Monday nights are my stay up nights. Man, thank that you, that means the world to us, brother. Thank you so much. Mm. Um, let's get uh, into some coming attractions uh, for the next few weeks on How About That Cigar Live. Those are brought to us by Tony Hoagland Insurance. At Hoagland Insurance, they are excited to serve and educate any new customers and give existing customers a refresher. Whether it's a business policy, auto insurance, home policy, or life insurance, if you are currently insured or just looking for a quote, Tony Hoagland and his team would love to create a personal price plan just for you. Mention How About That Cigar when you make your first appointment, and Tony will have a free cigar just for you. For more information, please call 763-421-4900 or visit champlininsurance.com. All right, guys, next week on June 10th, we have Ray Kane from Cigar Clowns on the show. We are still working on a guest or a show format for the 17th. But then on the 24th of June, we have Coleman Fine from Sinistro Cigars coming on the show. Uh, First time we're going to have Sinistro on the show. We've interviewed him at the trade shows before, but never on the show before. And cigar clubs, yeah. both, both new guys. Yeah, yeah. We're, first, we're in a month of new guests. people. We got John Peter on. We got them. We, I love it. We're just we're bringing yeah. it to you. Absolutely love it. And I will have somebody wonderful on the seventeenth. Don't worry about it. Oh yeah, it's all good. It's all good. We're always working on it. Um, so John Peter, brother, thank you so much for spending your Monday evening with us, man. We really appreciate it. Guys, thank you. Appreciate you for having me and sharing the time. Thank you. And before we let you go, do us a favor and tell everybody where we can get a hold of you, your Instagram, your your social, Facebook, social, social, all your socials. I'm you can find me everywhere from my personal accounts, John Peter Lorendi. Uh, and for Peter James, it's PeterJames.co on Instagram, Peter James Co on Facebook. Awesome. Awesome, brother. Well, thank you again so much. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Take it easy, brother. God bless. All right, viewers and listeners, guys, thank you so much for being the absolute best part of How About That Cigar How about that cigar Live. We're so I got tongue-tied there for a minute. Uh, so grateful to you guys uh, for being with us live on Facebook and YouTube and all of the other places. And, of course, if you are one of our fantastic audio podcast listeners, thanks so much for making us a part of your regular audio podcast rotation. Take just a minute. Click on all the buttons, the subscribe button, the like button. Follow us on all the channels that you can so you don't miss anything that we have going on. We appreciate if, it. If you guys have any questions for us, you can email us on the website, howaboutthatcigar.com. Be sure to follow us on all social media platforms. You'll find us at HBT Cigar. And of course, until we see you guys next time, burn cigars, not bridges. Thanks, guys. Any comments, opinions, viewpoints, or statements presented or uttered by guests on the HBTC podcast, HBTC live video streams, and all other media from HBT Media LLC are solely those of the individual and do not necessarily represent the opinions or viewpoints of How About That Cigar or its parent company, HBT Media LLC, any of our advertising partners, or the premium cigar industry. The primary purpose of How About That Cigar is to entertain and to encourage activity and growth within the community of people who enjoy or want to learn about the enjoyment of premium cigars.